All right, welcome back to another video, everybody. The two main topics are going to be choosing and experimenting with different clock sources, both internal and external to the Atmega. And the second topic is going to be programming the Atmega completely free from everything that's Arduino, such as the IDE and any kind of bootloader that might be pre-installed on any Arduino chips. Okay, so let's start with clock configuration. And this is important to know both because it gives a bunch of flexibility when you're creating your own projects, and also because if you're buying new unprogrammed microcontrollers, the default clock setting is gonna be different than on the Arduino, so that's good to keep in mind. As always, I'm gonna be using the Atmega 328P microcontroller, which is a default for Arduinos like the Uno, the Nano, and some others, I believe. In the data sheet, we can see that there's different options to choose from for external crystal oscillators, as well as internal oscillators like the low frequency one and the calibrated 8 megahertz one. And we can also use an external clock signal that can be generated by anything we want, basically. The default setting when we're buying new chips is the internal RC oscillator, which generates a frequency of 8 megahertz, which is then divided by 8 to get a 1 megahertz system clock. So let's get our brand new microcontroller and upload a very simple blinking LED program to it. As I mentioned, these new microcontrollers don't have a bootloader on them, so we're going to need an external programmer for them, and I'll talk about this in the second part of this video. Here's the code that I'll upload on it. Throughout the video, I'm going to always make the compiler assume that we're working with an 8 MHz clock, even when this isn't the case, so that we can see more clearly the differences through the blinking LED. So here's the code and we can upload it. And looking at the LED, we can see that it's blinking, but extremely slowly. This is because it's using the internal 8 MHz oscillator that then gets divided by 8 into 1 MHz. So it's actually running 1 8th the speed that we are assuming. So to change this, we have to modify the fuse bits. And if we look at the data sheet under the chapter memory programming fuse bits, we can see that there's three fuse bytes, the low, the high, and the extended. For this video, I'm only going to be looking at the low byte because the high and the extended are for different options that don't really concern us. To remove this division of the clock frequency, we just have to program to one bit number seven of the low fuse byte. The default value for the low fuse byte is 62 in hexadecimal. So if we make bit number seven a one, this turns it into E2 hexadecimal. So using AVR dude, all we have to do is write in this line and it's going to reprogram the low fuse to the value that we specified. Don't worry if you're not familiar with AVR dude or if you're on Windows because as soon as I'm done with the demonstration, I'll show how to install it on both operating systems so that there shouldn't be any problems. The command and all the options should be identical for all operating systems. Looking at the LED, we can now see that it's blinking with a period of one second as it was supposed to in the beginning. So this means that we did our fuse programming correctly. The next clock option that I want to take a look at is with an external digital signal. This option is very interesting if you want to customize things or synchronize your clocks across different devices. To do this, we can go back to the previous table and we can see that for an external clock, all the clock select bits from three to zero have to be all zeros. So our low fuse byte can be E0 in hex. After programming the low fuse byte, I used an external clock signal of 10 megahertz because that's kind of the only thing I had. And if I connect its output to the pin XTOL or Crystal 1, however you want to pronounce it, we can see that the LED is blinking and it's blinking slightly faster than before. This is because our frequency is now 10 megahertz instead of 8. So that means that it was successful as well. The last option that I'll be testing is going to be the full swing crystal oscillator, which means that the clock select bits 3 to 0 have to be either 0111 or 0110, depending on if it's a crystal or a ceramic oscillator. In my case, it's a quartz crystal, so I'll use the 0111. So this means that our low fuse byte is going to be F7. And after programming this, we can connect an 8 megahertz crystal. Unfortunately, I don't have a 16 one with two 22 picofarad capacitors on each end. And at this point, we can see that the LED is still blinking with the period of one second. So it has our eight megahertz clock signal. You might have noticed that three of the bits of this byte I haven't talked about. The clock out is just for outputting the system clock to a pin, which I believe is PB0. 
and the startup time 1 and 0 bits are for setting the delay after which the microcontroller actually starts working. I always left the default values so that the startup time is about 65 milliseconds because I don't really care about it starting up extremely fast or anything. But if you want a smaller delay, feel free to modify these bits. Okay, so let's quickly look at how to install AVR Dude if you don't already have it installed. Most of you probably already have it installed because you probably have the Arduino IDE. So I'm going to go through the four different options, which is Linux, Windows, and for each you can either have the IDE or not have it. If you're on Linux and you don't have it, you just use your package manager to install it very simply. And if you're on Windows and you have the Arduino IDE, just enable verbose output for your uploading of the sketches and then just click upload for anything it doesn't matter if you have anything connected or not here you can see in the terminal it calls AVR dude using its full path so all you have to do now is copy it after that you can go in your control panel and open the window that's called edit the systems environmental variables just click on environment variables under system variables go to path and select it and click edit and after that you can just add a new path by pasting what you copied from the Arduino IDE then remember to remove AVR dude the last word and change the forward slashes to backslashes and that should be it so click OK and now if we open a new terminal you can see that you can just write AVR dude and that calls up the command correctly now the last option is if you don't have the Arduino IDE on Windows you can just go to github and download it and you have the executable inside of a zip file and uh, just put it anywhere in your directory and then copy that directory path and do the exact same thing that I did now before moving on to the next part of the video, I'd like to say a few words about our sponsor. When it comes to PCBs, PCBWay has great offers. Personally, I've been ordering from them for a while now, and I have to say I'm really always happy with their service. Not only that, but they also offer CNC machining, 3D printing, as well as flexible PCBs and PCB assembly. Their latest event is the 7th Project Design Contest, which is going on now, and I really recommend checking them out both because they're giving some awesome prizes away, as you can see here, and because it's a great opportunity to share your project ideas. So if you're looking for high quality PCBs, 3D printed parts, or CNC machine parts, check out PCBWay.com with the link in the description. Alright, so this second part of the video is going to be about programming, compiling, and uploading code directly to the Atmega without using the Arduino IDE. And as you might have noticed, I'm using Linux, so it shouldn't be too different on Mac, except for maybe the installation. And on Windows, you might need to set up things slightly different, but it's definitely doable. Anyway, the prerequisites for this is to have installed AVR Dude, as we just saw, GCC AVR to compile, AVR libc, uh, just has some libraries that are useful like the delay function and then make is if you want to use a make file to automate everything and uh, the next thing to do is obviously to just write our code and here I have the example of before which is just a blinking LED here you see there's two includes this one is for all the ports like data direction registers and ports and everything else and then util slash delay is for the delay function. And this one's the one that needs the definition of the CPU frequency. Once that's done, you can include any header files that you might have and whatnot. So to compile and upload, uh, I do everything in a make file to make things a lot simpler. All right, so the first command that you need to compile is this one. Basically use GCC specifies the type of microcontroller. This is the optimization, which isn't required, but you can add it, obviously. This is the input file, and as an output, we specify that it should give exe.elf. What I've seen most people do online is to convert the elf file into an intel hex format file to then uh, upload onto the microcontroller. But this actually I found to be unnecessary. In fact, when we use AVR Dude to upload, we can actually just give it the ALF file and I found it to work fine. And then after that, we can upload it using a similar line of code that you saw before. Although instead of uh, specifying the fuse here, the fuse byte, we specify that it has to be written to the flash. And then W means write, so that remains the same. And then here we give the file and the file format. In this case, if it's an Intel hex, we put an I, but we can also just give it the ELF and then specify E 
and that should work uh, just as fine. Now I don't have anything connected, so it's not gonna work, but you can see it didn't give an error or anything. You can see here I got everything wrapped up into a make file, and I still have the object copy command, which can be uh, removed as we saw before. So this makes it so that we can easily compile and upload code with this make file if we just write make it compiles it and then if i write make u for upload it both compiles if it needs to again or otherwise it just uploads it directly here i have different lines for different cases this one is the one i've been using because it has the pb version which is the one that i've been showing in the video then i also made a clean rule to clean up all the non-essential files when i'm done and i guess that should be it so hopefully this was helpful Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.